Hey, Kirk Duncan here. Love to help you become a better coach. I've been doing this for over 18 years, and I want to help you raise your skill in how you affect people in moving forward in their life as a coach. So coaching is awesome, right? It's beautiful. It's a wonderful experience because you get to use all your gifts and talents to help other people get out of the mess or get through the problems or accomplish the goals that they're facing in their life. Now, as a coach, there's going to be a time along the way where you're going to wonder, why is my client stuck? What is stopping them from moving forward? So over the last 18 years of coaching, I found that there's three categories that causes a person to be stuck. So this word stuck actually has three different angles. You want to look at it to be able to break down what this stuck ness is. So number one is the mental block or the mental stuck. Second one is the emotional trigger stuck. And then the third one is the lack of education and skill stuck. So there's three different kinds of stuck. So if your client is stuck, let me share with you what you do in each one of these three scenarios to help them move forward. Now, as I've been coaching over the last 18 years, and I've heard all kinds of stories, all kinds of things, drama and difficulties and challenges that people have faced, I really have narrowed it down to these three different categories. Now, the reason why I narrow it down to three different categories is so I don't get confused or lost as a coach in how I coach people. So if I narrow it down to a mental block, an emotional trigger, or a lack of skill in education, I can be really prepared as a coach to help this person move through this stuck moment. Now, you know the word stuck is gonna come from your client, and they'll either say something is stopping me or I'm stuck. They don't know how to describe what it is that they're going through. So you now knowing that there's three different types of being stuck, you now can actually lay out the three options to your client and ask them, is this something that you're stuck because of the way you're thinking? Or do you think you're stuck because of the way you're feeling? Or do you think you're stuck because you just don't know what to do? See, that's really cool to be able to do that as a coach, to be able to lay that out to the client because then they realize you know something in each one of these categories. The mental block, the emotional trigger, and the lack of skill and education. So knowing that it's those three, when you're coaching, it's not scary or worrisome if your client is really intensely concerned about how they're stuck because you can uncover it and say, oh, let's do something about that. So let's walk through each one of these in how you move your client through each one of these. Let's start with number three. I know it's kind of like the back end of the list, but let's start with number three. So most of the time, people are actually lacking skill and lacking education. So as a coach, whatever your client is working on, whatever their goal is, you want to put them into an education pattern, meaning every day they ought to be reading an article or a book or watching videos about their goal. What is it they want to accomplish? So they're constantly adding education to their mind. They then will find out what skills that they're missing. Now, you don't have to provide all those skill training. You're just helping your client find out what it is that they're missing. Now, usually new coaches don't have their client increase their education. They don't do it. And so then what happens is their clients crash and they get stuck. It's because there's not new education happening. It's just not happening. And so when it doesn't happen, that becomes one of the reasons why they're stuck. So to help your client get through this particular part, this number three, is you have them start watching videos, reading a book, or finding out where they can gain the skills they need to accomplish the goal that they want. And so you make that part of the plan, part of the routine, their daily routine, is to add some level of education every single day. And about 15 to 30 minutes worth is enough to be able to keep them going and not get stuck in that particular stuckness, <laughs> the number three where it's lack of skill and education. I found over the last 18 years that if my client isn't participating in some level of education every day about their goal, it's inevitable they're going to tell me they're stuck and that's why they're stuck. Good, right? Okay, so totally doable to keep your client up and out of that particular level of being stuck. Okay, number two is emotional triggers. Whoa, right? How many people have emotional triggers. 
Oh, pretty much everybody. Sooner or later, something happens where they overreact or they get triggered by somebody somehow and something happening and the emotions build up and then they either blow up or they shut down. So there's either this big explosion of emotion through the trigger or there's a collapse that happens on the inside and they get super quiet and they just don't talk to people and they shut down. So emotional triggers, how do you help somebody through an emotional trigger? Again, this is where you have your client on a daily routine of doing some type of emotional management skill. Now that emotional management skill, which there's lots of them, is something that you probably are gonna have to teach them or show them how to do this so that they're doing a little bit of that every single day through a daily routine. If they're not doing this on a daily routine, then what happens is they're gonna have a buildup of emotion and then somebody's gonna come along and say something or do something and then bam, it triggers them and they blow up or they shut down and now they're stuck. Because that's the number two type of being stuck is because they are not managing their emotions. Now what is a simple emotional management technique, right? Like what is something super easy that everybody could do? Because maybe your client is stuck in the emotional trigger zone and you don't know what to do, right? Okay, so what do you do? Do you have them at the end of the day write down how the day turned out? What did you like and what were you frustrated about? And just find out what went well, what didn't go well. That exercise all by itself of like doing inventory for the day is a way of sorting through their thoughts and feelings. Now it's, it's a sorting, it's not really a release technique, but it's a sorting. And that's a great beginner level to give your client is to evaluate the day, see what worked, what didn't work, and then you ask them, okay, now what are you gonna adjust for tomorrow? So each day your client is actually getting better at sorting through what's working, what's not working, and also what they're gonna adjust to make tomorrow even better. That's a very gentle way to get someone started in managing their emotions. Because usually people at the end of the day, what they do is they try to escape their emotions. They try to get away from it. Watching TV, going and doing activities and things like that where they're actually just trying to get away from it hide it and kind of stuff it away. But sooner or later as the days add up, the emotions add up and then the triggers happen again. So you can give your client a routine of doing that particular inventory exercise at the end of the day. Now what's beautiful about that as they go to write this down at the end of the day is it raises their awareness of how they're thinking, what they're thinking, who they're thinking these thoughts about. And it actually helps them become more responsible, which is a good word, responsible. And if we help them become more responsible, they then become more conscious of how they're reacting to people. More responsible, less reaction. More responsible leads to more response, not just a reaction, like a trigger, an emotional trigger going off. So that's awesome with number two. Okay, so that's super easy. Get your client started with that. And of course, there's other levels of emotional work that we could do to help people, but that's a great place to start with anybody at any time. Okay, number one, mental blocks. What does it mean, a mental block? Well, usually what that means, there's two parts. One is there's a particular belief that they have that is negative. And so that means that they're trying to move forward and they run into this particular way of thinking that they have about themselves. Now it's a thought, a thought that generated somewhere in their past that now they, they're trying to move forward with their goal. They run into this particular way of thinking or their perception that they have about themselves. That particular perception can be so old and strong and solid that they actually believe it to be true whenever it happened in their past. So usually mental blocks, the one out of the two examples I'm gonna give you, the first one is there's a particular belief that they haven't ever changed it. They're just still functioning off of something that happened in their childhood or a teenage life, and they have this particular way of seeing themselves. And so what you do is you help them come up with a new view of themselves that will help them move from here forward. Many times a client has never upgraded the perceptions they have of themselves. And so they're really functioning off of old perceptions that keep them trapped in that old way of thinking. And so what you do is you write out either a sentence or a small paragraph that is a description of how they're going to be moving forward. And then to put that new belief into their head, what they do is they recite or read that each day. It's a great way to be able to get people past their mental blocks. Okay, so I mentioned that there was two, right? So one of them was that belief or paradigm that is set, that now we get to change that with that particular sentence or paragraph to be able to help them get through this stuck part of this mental block, right? Okay, so what's the other part when it comes to mental block? Well, it could be 
just an absence of what it's going to look like moving forward. Sometimes there's just a blank spot. Like that happened to me. <laughs> in my personal development, I got to a point where there was this huge blank spot in my head. I couldn't see where this was going. And so there was literally like I was at the end of the road or like the end of my neural pathway. And I look forward and there's just nothing. Emptiness, like a blank canvas, like there's nothing. And many times a mental block could be number one, could be a negative context that's in there that we have to upgrade. Number two, it's just that it's missing. It's just gone, there's nothing there. And so what we call that is a lack of vision about where they're going. And so when somebody is blocked in a mental block, don't think it's always just negative or negative paradigms or those kind of things. Help your client out with painting the vision or talking it out. And as you go to talk out what it's going to look like, next week, next month, the next couple months, something you can do is you can write down those details of what they hope will happen over the next couple weeks or the next couple months. And then that becomes a type of vision statement. You might've heard of that either as a story or a vision statement, but what it does is it help fills that gap, that emptiness, where it was empty. Now you have a story to help them see where they're going. So check this out, a mental block or a reason that they're stopped could be because there's nothing in front of them. I mean, imagine that. Imagine if you're standing in a dark room, right? You're standing in a dark room. You can't see where you're going. So are you gonna like run across the room? No, you're not. You're gonna, cause you're gonna run into something or something could happen to you. So you kind of like stop or like walk slow when you can't see. Same thing happens in our mind. If we can't see forward, we kind of slow down and we don't do much. So you talk it through with your client and you take those details that they're saying and they either they write them up or you write them up and that becomes their vision statement or their vision or story of where they're going. And then what really helps them if they'll review that in the morning while they're getting ready and think through those details or read through those details, just keep it simple because this is brand new for them, but it will help them get through that mental stuckness. So everything I just shared with you is gonna help you move your client through being stuck. And now you know that there's three different types of being stuck. Let's review them one more time. Number three is a lack of education or skill. Number two is an emotional reaction or emotional trigger. And then number one is the mental block. So as a coach, if your client gets stuck, you now have three different areas to look at, three different areas to review with them. And they could have all three. They could, but you gotta check it. Check each one. See if they're set up and prepared to minimize the stuck feeling in each of those three categories. So my years of coaching has taught me to check in with those three areas to make sure that they're doing something about those three areas so they don't get stuck. See, that's what's cool about this, is if you know that these are areas that they get stuck, you can actually put this in your coaching material so that you're teaching them these particular principles that I just shared with you about how to take care of each one of those, but you're doing preventative maintenance, meaning teach them about these three in the beginning of your coaching program and warn them that these are three different areas you could get stuck in. And here's what you're gonna do in each one of these areas so you don't get stuck. So if you minimize where they could get stuck, they just keep going. Sure, they'll have bumps along the way, but they don't come screeching to a halt. That is so frustrating when you're a coach and your client is doing really good and then all of a sudden they just stop. And it's like, what happened? Or they quit texting you or they quit calling you and it's like, what happened? But now you know, one of these three areas literally is happening and they don't have any answers. They have no ideas of what to do. But now because you've learned this, you can jump in and help them. You probably have a client right now who's stuck. So call them up, check in with them on these three areas, help them out. Everything I just shared with you, I've used over the last 18 years and I still use today. It is so good. My whole purpose here is to help you become a better coach and in any way possible that you can become better, you're gonna help other families, you're gonna help individuals, you're gonna help business owners, people of all different backgrounds to do better in their life. And that is a good feeling to know you're doing the right thing to help people out right now. Now, if you wanna learn more about what I'm doing, there's some link down here below. Click the link and check it out, see what else I have for you here. But what you wanna do is you wanna watch the next video right after this so you can even learn more about how to be a great coach. Awesome.